The senior most Supreme Court justice says he is stepping down. Stephen Breyer, who's 83 years old, plans to retire at the end of this term or until uh, the Senate has confirmed his replacement. Breyer was appointed to uh, the bench by President Bill Clinton uh, 27 years ago. His retirement allows President Joe Biden to appoint a new justice. To keep in mind, what did Biden say during the campaign? He was going to name a black woman to the position. This came up in today's White House briefing. This is what presidential spokesperson, press secretary Jen Psaki had to say. Uh, sorry, folks, I thought we had the uh, sound bite there. Uh, so we'll talk about this. Uh, we'll, we'll play that for you in a little bit. But we're going to talk about this with our, our panel. Uh, Ellie Mestel, Justice Correspondent for The Nation. Damon Hewitt, who's the President, Executive Director, Lawrence Committee for Civil Rights Under Law. We also, of course, have Candace Kelly, a legal analyst. Uh, and we'll also be joined by uh, Attorney Monique Presley, who's also a crisis manager. Damon, I want to start with you. I know you have to go. Uh, you've got a hard out there. Uh, this is obviously, so before we even get to, obviously, the impact of, of a historical point, of a black woman. Talk about Breyer's 27 years on the bench uh, and what that meant to the court. Well, look, Breyer has been a, a lion, a dean uh, of that bench, certainly the so-called liberal wing, even though he's been among the more moderate uh, of them. Uh, he, his, his voice and his vote has been critical uh, from his you know, eloquent uh, you know, lectures, diatribes, and, and interrogation from the bench and his questions to counsel uh, to his reputation for fair-mindedness. Because one thing no one could ever say about uh, Justice Breyer is that he was trying to engineer a specific, out specific outcome. He was always fair, and he was usually, in my view, on the right side of justice and racial justice at that. So he will certainly be missed. That said, it is time to make room for new voices that embrace what I believe is a more progressive and expansive notion of what the law is and what it can be for black people. Uh, obviously, uh, a lot of people were highly critical of uh, Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg for not stepping down when President Barack Obama was there. She passes away when Donald Trump is president, paving the way uh, for Amy Coney Barrett, allowing for conservatives to expand their majority on the Supreme Court. And there, were, there was lots of pressure on Breyer to step down uh, while Democrats control the U.S. Senate. Without, without question. And I think for him, this is a legacy play. Uh, in my view, I didn't speak to him specifically about this, of course, but this is a legacy play. He knew he had options. He knew he had a choice. And he saw uh, not only the hit to the legacy that happened with Justice Ginsburg when she sadly passed away while on the bench, but he also didn't you know, want to go out like that himself. You know, and I think he sort of real politic here and also just frankly just did the right thing. Um, it would be quite selfish to stay on the bench thinking that, uh, as some people say, why should I deprive you of myself? Uh, in his view, he wants to see something more and better for the long term. Again, fair and balanced as the jurist, but also understanding that there is a takeover at play on this court. It's already in full swing. And I'm sure that's also exhausting and grating for him as the dean of their liberal way. Uh, obviously, Damien, when we talk about, when we talk about, um, again, when we look at judicial writings, you talk about this takeover, 6-3 conservative majority. Look, right. Republicans want to control this court over the next 50 years. That's what all the, the fight for the Supreme Court has been about. Uh, and so Democrats and liberals have not been as focused on the courts. Have you seen a change with the federal judicial nominees uh, it, with Biden where they now understand you can't act like the courts don't matter? I think this administration does understand it, and I think it's not just rhetorical. I think we've seen significant action, the highest rate of a number of confirmations for any president in the modern era, perhaps ever. Uh, I can tell you for, firsthand a number of former uh, colleagues and people I've supervised even who are brilliant attorneys are now being nominated and appointed and, and confirmed to the bench. And so these are people from the civil rights community. These are people who have done government service at state and federal level. These are people who have defended people's life and liberty uh, in criminal and juvenile court proceedings. These are people who understand all of America. And this administration is delivering in that respect, I have to say. All right, Damon, who in laws committed for civil rights under the law, we still appreciate it. Thanks a lot. I appreciate you. All right, then. I want to pull in our legal panel here, Ellie Mistel, uh, Candace as well. Candace, I want to go to you. Again, black women. Critical, uh, critical, critical, critical uh, voters out there. 115 Supreme Court justices in history. 108 have been white men. Four, then you, of course, you have uh, 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 two African-American men. Uh, you've got four white women, one Latina. 
So all these people who are yelling, oh my God, choose the best person. Sorry, I'm not trying to hear anything you got to say. <laughs> you know, listen, when we have a black woman that comes to the table, it's going to change the conversation. And this is something that, as you said, Joe Biden promised. And so we're going to look for that to happen. I also think that it served a, a great purpose for Justice Breyer to step down at this time. I think when we look at it politically, he's always talked, especially in the past couple of years, about how his his role as a justice was not a political role. But we all know that being a justice is definitely a political role. This is why we have justices accept certain cases and they don't accept certain cases. Thousands come to the Supreme Court, yet they want to talk about affirmative action now for some reason. And that's been settled law of the land for years. Justice Breyer, I think it was a question of timing. He knows that a black woman, it's time for that to happen. And that he, by him sitting on there, it would have hogged the position uh, and wouldn't have made sense. Remember, as you said, there was a campaign to get him off the bench. There was a car that was going around the Supreme Court that said, Justice Breyer, please retire. Justice Breyer, please retire. I think that he didn't want to make it look political, which is why at this time, on his own accord, where it wasn't in the media so much, he decided it's time for me to retire. But I think he's always known. I think he's always known, based upon what happened with Ruth Bader Ginsburg, that it was time so that we could get another person like him, or even to be more progressive, to be in that seat. So he did the right thing. It was just in his own time. Ellie, Mister, anybody who's actually saying that, oh my goodness, oh these these aren't political decisions. They're absolutely crazy. First of all, the president picks him. Two, the Senate confirms them. Supreme Court nominations, they are political decisions. Political by Republicans, quite frankly. One of the reasons why Breyer had to, not an option, had to retire before the midterms is because Mitch McConnell has essentially promised that if his party takes back control of the Senate, he will not confirm a Supreme Court nominee by President Joe Biden. We know McConnell's not bluffing because that's exactly what he did to the first black president, Barack Obama, when he refused to confirm Merrick Garland despite him being nominated um, by the president. So McConnell does, isn't, doesn't play. McConnell has made the Supreme Court a political institution more than any other single American has. And it, the Democrats simply need to catch up, just wake up to the game. Breyer's retirement was simply not an option. He could not have risked taking it past the midterm, having Republicans take back the Senate, and then at 83 years old, almost 84, basically not being able to retire for the next two years, potentially the next six years. Um, we played that game before and we lost. So, so this was a not. This was this is a no brainer. He had to leave. And I just want to say one more thing in terms of this question of qualifications. <laughs> all right. A aside from the fact that, as you pointed out, there have only been five women on the Supreme Court in its entire history. I think it's time to find some qualified women to fill the these roles. There, there is no argument that of the people that Biden could pick that one of that that if he's he limits himself to black women he will find somebody who is as qualified as every single white man on that bench to, t to okay. taking for instance um Kandaji Brown Jackson who's probably the leader in the clubhouse we're talking about a woman with a Harvard college degree a Harvard law degree who has been the head of the US sentencing commission who is in who was on the DC circuit sitting in Merrick Garland's seat who was a finalist for the appointment that went to Merrick Garland this there there isn't a more qualified person for this job than Brown Jackson that you are going to find. And she is just one of a number of strikingly qualified, immaculately educated um, black women who could take this job. But I do also want us uh, not to fall for the trap, Monique, of qualified. Because here's the piece. When any of these white folks are nominated, the words qualified aren't brought up. Only the qualifier qualified is used whenever it involves people who look like us. Uh, and so that's the game being played. I also don't want to hear qualified is because they went to an Ivy League school. Uh, I remember when President Bush had nominated uh, a woman who had gone to SMU Law School and all these Republicans. Harriet Myers. Uh, Harriet Myers. All the Republicans who always talk about, uh, oh, uh, elitist, they blasted him. How dare you pick her? 
but she went to SM Law, SMU Law School. And then, of course, one of the uh, federal judges, names being uh, thrown around, uh, that, pre- that uh, Congressman Clyburn has been pushing hard. Her hearing is next week. She went to the University of South Carolina. We have got to get people in this city out of this mindset that, oh, if you didn't go to Harvard, Yale, Princeton, Cornell, Brown, or one of the Ivy League schools, whether undergrad or law school, you somehow can't serve on a Supreme Court. There are only two law schools, until Amy Coney Barrett was nominated, was confirmed, there were only two law schools represented on the Supreme Court, Harvard and Yale. Now, Coney Barrett comes from Notre Dame, which is also pretty pretty good school. Uh, and the justice you're talking, the judge you're talking about is J. Michelle Childs. If she is the pick, she would be the first person on the Supreme Court, the only person on the Supreme Court who went to a state school. Look, talking about professional diversity and educational diversity is part of talking about diversity. And one of the things that Biden has done a great job of, actually, with his lower courts appointments, has been picking people who come from a diverse educational background and a diverse uh, a, a diverse professional background. So I absolutely agree with you that qualifications does not just mean go to specific law schools and have a specific job at a, at a specific corporate law, law firm. And I'm saying that there are tons of women, of women of color, of black women specifically, who fit every bill that you want to ascribe, that you want to ascribe mm. to them. And I'll, I'll add this. It's unlikely, I don't know this for certain, but it's unlikely anybody Biden nominates is going to be credibly accused of trying to rape somebody in high school. I'm just saying. Unlikely that anybody that Biden nominates will have, will be credibly accused of perjuring themselves before Congress at a prior confirmation hearing. So when we talk about qualifications, I think we also should talk about moral qualifications, which, as far as I can see, everybody who's going to be on Biden's shortlist has in spades. Monique? Yeah, I, um, I certainly agree that Ivy League qualifications for for lawyers is not the only thing uh, that matters, and perhaps it should not matter as much. Of course, I know Ellie was just talking about the current Supreme Court and what's represented, but obviously the first um, Black man to be on the Supreme Court went to Howard University School of Law. So um, we did definitely start representing the court with the best there is in terms of law school education. Uh, but I don't want it to be held again. I, I take I take it you very, I take it you finished from Howard Law School. You, you, you take it right. <laughs> okay, got it. Um, I don't I don't want to I don't want to hold it against though these black women for having. Uh, Ivy League education either. We, no matter how you slice qualified, these women, we don't know that this is really the list or not, but the women who they say are on the list, no matter how you dissect it, they are experienced. They are brilliant. They are qualified. Um, they, they are well-educated. They are all of those things. So if it happens to be the case that the first black woman to be on the Supreme Court is also Ivy League educated, that's grand. It's not just in D.C. circles that that matters. It's still important around the world. Uh, and I want people around the world to know that we have those qualifications as well. And I'm proud of my sisters who matriculated uh, through those halls and 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 through other places as well. So m- my bottom line on this, which is what I tweeted earlier today, is that out of all of those women who are on there, uh, all of those qualified, brilliant women, if I have to p- put my full weight behind one, um, I'm going to put it behind the one that gets nominated. How about that? The one the president picks is the one I'm going to put my full force behind. Would it like it to be a civil rights lawyer the way that Thurgood was, the way that a couple on there are? Sure, because I am one. But what is important to me is that we not miss this moment getting picky, getting petty, pit, building up fiefdoms, getting in camps, finding reasons one is better than the other. No. These women are badasses, every single one of them, and whomever it is will surely be better than the Gorsuches, the 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 um, ACBs of the world. These these last picks that have happened, pretty much except for uh, the two that Barack Obama still has on the court and the one that that President Clinton put on the court. Uh, other than that, we're they're they're far surpassing all of them as oh, far as I'm concerned. Dr. Pamela Hill, assistant professor of social work at the University of Texas at Arlington. Look, I'm down for all of them. 
The point that I'm making, though, is we get trapped in these boxes, especially in, in, uh, in the nation's capital, where they're very dismissive uh, of folks uh, who did not come through uh, the same sort of uh, uh, schools. And so then it becomes, oh, those are the only credentials that matter. And so I want President Biden to look at a wide range of people, a wide range of sisters from different backgrounds, uh, because that is important uh, when you talk about serving on the highest court in the land. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. I totally agree. And, you know, we have to remember that black women are rising in ways that we haven't seen in a very long time. We are seeing sisters who are making an impact at all levels, the local, the state, the national. We are seeing these black women uh, who are attorneys, who are becoming judges, who are making an impact and making decisions. And I think, you know, there is a fear. Of course there is a fear. So we want to be qualified. And who makes the decision of what's qualified? Um, I agree that whoever Biden picks a black woman, we should all be behind her. We should all be supportive and we should all uh, make sure that that we do what we can do at the local level as as well. Uh, Brown Lewis, she is the dean of the North Carolina Central University Law School. She joins us uh, right now. Glad to have you here. Um, um, just your thoughts on uh, Justice Stephen Breyer. Uh, he's supposedly he is going to actually officially announce his retirement tomorrow. He has, he has already said to, to the White House, apparently he talked to President Biden last week, let him know that he was going to retire and says that he will stay on the court until his replacement has been nominated and confirmed. I think it's a great decision. I think that in the past, um, the, the Democrat nominees have stayed on a bit too long. And then you have a situation where the Republican president has to choose a predecessor. So I think to have this planned secession is a good thing. Um, and so I was quite excited uh, at the possibility of getting uh, a black woman on the Supreme Court. Uh, you, you mentioned that black, black woman dog. <laughs> you, you, uh, you, you mentioned that planned secession, uh, uh, Candace, when Justice Anthony Kennedy stepped down, he coordinated all of that and basically made it clear to Trump's folks, I'm going to step down, but you've got to put on my chosen person, Kavanaugh. Hmm. You know, one of the things that Justice Breyer, what would do him good is to do the exact same thing and put his, listen, if he's not going to be a Supreme Court justice anymore, uh, he can go ahead and be political all he wants because he's the person who knows what's good for the court. I also think that, you know, when we talk about those people who are qualified, we already know that the people who are already on the federal bench, uh, one of the potential candidates is on the uh, heads up in the, in the California Supreme Court. We already know that they're immaculate. We already know that they, listen, they wouldn't be there if they didn't have an immaculate background. Because they're black, they have to be immaculate. That's another level of expectation that we're often held to. Well, they got to be perfect. But like you said, there are more perfect people out there. They just don't look the same way and have the same qualifications of others that are out there. Not only does Biden have to expand his search in terms of a black woman, but as you said, the types of people and the types of backgrounds that we bring to the table. Because times have changed. You know, the issues that we're dealing with, abortion rights, gun rights, so many rights that we are dealing with, affirmative action, all of these things that a black women specifically in this world in 2022 would have special experience and bring to the table. Justice Breyer, it would do him right to play in the world of politics at this point and say who his recommendation would be. Why not now? He's not allowed to be, he's not going to be a justice anymore. So politics wouldn't have to be a part of it because that's what he's been fighting over the past few years. Um, Ellie, I want to show this tweet right here that my goodness, when you see it, jumps out at you. Uh, this was from a professor at Princeton. He said, Breyer's replacement will be the sixth Democratic nominee since 1968 compared to 21 Republican nominees. Of the prior 26 nominees, four Dems and 16 Republicans were confirmed. Of course, uh, uh, Bork was the one who wasn't confirmed. If people want to understand why we consistently had a conservative Supreme Court, that right there tells you it. And it's because conservatives are willing to fight in the weeds for this. Conservatives are willing to go to the mattresses for this at every point. You simply do not see conservative justices willfully retiring under Democratic administrations 
that happens now and again on the Democratic side. Um, you see them timing their retirements kind of with a with an understanding of their own mortality. It's been slower on the Democratic side for, for an uptake on that. And when you get to the Senate level, you see Republican senators and therefore Republican politicians fight to the last for their people. Um, and you don't always see that the, the same fire and passion from Democrats. Uh, look, the, the things that we're saying in terms of def, you know, whoever it is, let's unite. The, I, we do not say this idly because we know what's going to happen, all right? No matter who Biden picks, we know what the Mike Lees and Josh Hawley's are going to try to do to their rec resumes. We know that Senator Marsha Blackburn will call Biden's nominee a criminal. She literally just called a black judge that that Biden nominated a criminal um, with a rap sheet because of he had a couple of moving violations, a couple of speeding tickets um, uh, from literally 10 or 15 years ago. So we know that the Republican smear machine will do everything they can to smear whoever Biden picks. And unfortunately, we know that too many liberals, too many white liberals will start to play the game that they play not just with black women, but literally with any woman. They'll start to play the game of, oh, you know what? I would have supported this other woman, but not this woman, right? Oh, would have, if he had nominated Oprah, I would have supported her. But instead, he nominated Child. Like, whatever they're going to say, we know it's coming. And so it is important for us to be united and to defend these women, um, whoever the woman is, when she is picked, because we know that they will be attacked ruthlessly by the other side. Uh, Monique, again. Can uh, I say I uh, agree 100% uh, uh, before you ask me a question? Yep, you got it. Uh, David, <laughs> David <laughs> Nur responded to that tweet we just showed you with this tweet. Since that time, Democrats have won more votes in 62% of presidential elections, but will have filled just 20% of Supreme Court seats. Well, and, you know, and so now we're on the popular vote. Now we're on the difference between electoral college and what it means to have the popular vote. And when we've elected presidents, we've also had the popular vote and we've watched the past two uh, Republican presidents not have it. We see what it looks like to have a Senate that is not representative of the numerical votes of the people. Right. Because we saw it last week. We had uh, 48 Democrats representing something like 40 million plus more people um, in the in the United States Senate than the 50 on the Republican side. So the numbers, because of the manner in which the constitutional system is set up, having the numbers in and of itself, raw numbers, is not enough. And that is what has happened on the court as well. And Roland, you said that they're hoping to control the court for 50 years. Look, I think they're going to control the court for 50 years. Uh, and we knew these stakes. We, I agree with everything that Ellie just said. And 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 we, on your show, we've been screaming for probably, you know, since News One Now days. So six, seven years we've been saying, but the courts, but the courts, but the courts, because the Republicans have been fighting the fights that matter for a long term strategy of deteriorating civil rights and of increasing their own power and increasing their own economic footing. So the the oldest person on the court right now is the one who's about to retire. That's Justice Breyer. I believe he's 83. The next one, Clarence Thomas, is 73 years old. Then Alita 71. And everybody else after that is in their 60s, 50s, and 40s. Well, 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 well Thomas so, is 73. I think Alito is 70. Yes. Uh, and that, Roberts, well, is, and Roberts is 65. 71. Right. So that's what I'm saying. 60s. And, and 73 is not old. And 71 is younger. You know what I'm saying? Right. So we're looking at at least a strong stretch of 10 plus years. Right. Maybe uh, more. Um, and the, the minute there, there's another Republican mm -hmm. president, then, you know, a healthy Thomas, right. um, a healthy Alito can retire. So this is where we are. So I, I agree with Ellie. People better not be out here saying, I want this one and I want that one and this black woman, well, but not that black woman. Enough. The, well, that's Don't why, do it. The, that's, Don't do it now. Don't do it later. That's why I keep no, saying He has his list. That's he's that's what that, more black women, you know that than 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 right the right. He's, first of all, he, of first of all, he's picked twenty. He knows how to do he's it. He's picked twenty four black judges this year, eight of them women in his first year. The, the thing here, the thing here, again, what we talk about on the show all the time is that elections matter, uh, Doctor Hill. And when you look at the elections, the elections uh, are very simple, and that is 
it, you replace Breyer, conservatives still hold a six to three uh, lead. Let's say uh, Thomas retires. OK, even if Democrats are still in the White House, it's now five, four. And so now you get to Alito, who's 71. So to that particular point, uh, you know, controlling the courts, you're talking about, yes, Another, you know, 10, 15, potentially 20 years where you will have uh, like that. That's if, again, if Democrats still control the White House. Republican wins in 2024. Oh, they're going to uh, Republicans win. Let me, let me be real clear. If a Republican wins in 2024, Thomas and potentially Alito will retire to allow them to appoint a conservative ju judge who's anywhere from 45 to 50 years old. Yes, yes. And, you know, I mean, this is something that we should not be surprised about. Uh, they have been planning and they want to make sure that they are, that they that they stay in control and stay in control for a long time. And we just have to, you know, again, we we have to make sure that we support whoever is nominated and that we 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 again, you know, keep our voices high and pay attention to what's what's going on and get as get as many black people, black women specifically, in any position to make these decisions. It's, 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 it's critical for us. Uh, and I know, Ellie, this tweet I'm about to show uh, is going to drive you absolutely out of your mind. Mm. I think you've already commented on that. This is what uh, uh, Senator Dianne Feinstein, the former chair of the Senate Judiciary Committee, said. Uh, she doesn't see a rush to confirm a brow replacement. With six months until Justice Breyer departs the court, the Senate Judiciary Committee will have ample time to hold hearings on President Biden's nominee. Let's keep in mind, it was one month. Amy Coney Barrett was uh, was nominated on September 26 uh, to uh, fill the seat of the late Ruth Bader, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. She was confirmed one month later, nine days before the election. This whole talk about, oh, we got time. No, Senator Feinstein, you don't. You're 84. Lee Hay also is older as well. Democrats got a 50-50 right now. OK, um, anything happens to one Democratic United States senator. Oh, all this all this goes up in the air. Uh, I saw another report where it says Democrats have made it clear. No, 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 no. We're going to get this done in a month. And my whole deal is that she should be confirmed and sworn in no later than April 1st. Mm. It is insane. Well, he said he's going to serve his term. He's going to finish his term, he said. Well, well he, he can finish his term, but you can still confirm her. Go, go ahead, uh, Ellie. It is insane how Democrat, how there are some Democrats who still want to play by the old rules that Mitch McConnell has lit on fire. Like the, when we talk about this generational Republican control of the Supreme Courts, yes, that's true if you don't expand the courts, which we absolutely should, because we can't take 50 years of Republicans controlling the courts. I don't just mean that from a racial justice perspective or a social justice perspective. I mean, the planet cannot take mm. another 50 years <laughs> of Republicans controlling the court and stopping any meaningful legislation against climate change. So Democrats have to really get with the program. I know that Chuck Schumer has said that we will do this quickly. I would expect Biden's scheduled to give the State of the Union on March 1. I will. I, I expect that he will have this person announced by then, might even use the State of the Union to announce her, um, and right. that we will we will have the the, 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 the hearings over the spring. And, uh, you know, as you say, like, Breyer said he's going to finish out the term, but, like, the day that term is over, this next person is going to be ready to step in, all pre-confirmed, and ready to step in um, to his shoes. This is just some, this, it it has to happen this way because the 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 reality is, and again, this is not of the Democrats doing. These are the rules as given to us by Mitch McConnell. I mean, it's as simple as that. McConnell has proven his willingness to obstruct the entire thing to steal seats on this court. So you so you have to recognize what he's going to do, stop him from doing it, and then expand the court to to claw back the ill-gotten gains that he's already banked. First of all, y'all y'all too nice. Candace, damn announcing by March 1st. I ain't, <laughs> I, ain't, I ain't waiting that long, okay? It's January, it's January 26th. You know they've already been sitting here vetting folks. Uh, no, uh, announce that sucker during Black History Month uh, and then get them confirmations. If he gonna speak to Congress on March 1st, talk that damn confirmation hearing on March 2nd. That's a Wednesday. Uh, get this sucker done by April 1st. Boom. She can raise her, she can raise her hand. She confirm. Y'all ain't all, y'all, y'all waiting too damn long. Yeah, I think it's too long too, Roland. You know, 
people are talking behind the scenes now to figure out how do we make this go a little quicker. If Justice Breyer said that he was going to finish out his term, so be it. He can change his mind. And I think that it is best that he changes his mind to get a new person in there so people understand that the Democrats aren't playing and that they're not playing before midterms. I think that one thing um, that is important to remember is that the rules that McConnell set down in order to get Amy Coney Barrett in, these are the rules that at least the Democrats get to play by in terms of making sure that their nomination um, nominee is is confirmed. So in terms of, you know, he got rid of the filibuster rule when it comes to Supreme Court justices. Well, that will play in the Democrats' favor now. Anything that played in the favor of Amy Coney Barrett will now play in the favor of the nominee that uh, Justice Biden, I'm sorry, that the that President Biden makes. So with that in mind, the quicker the better. Why, why, why would we wait? As you said, so much could happen when we wait. With this 50-50 split Senate, you know, Kamala being the, the, the deciding vote, one person can make all the difference in terms of just upsetting the balance. Why not do it now and get it out of the way? Tick tock. There's a calendar that we need to beat here. Uh, Dean Lewis is back. Dean Lewis, glad to have you. So again, what we're, what we're dealing with here, um, and, and, and I make this point all the time, and people sit here and they, oh man, and I love these people who say, <laughs> Roland, why are you always trying to push folks, push us vote Democrat? No, I'm, ta I'm looking at policy. And when I look at policy, Republicans have made it perfectly clear the kind of judges they want. They have, the, federal, the Federalist Society was created. It was created to utilize the, quote, elite institutions to bring in hard right people to serve as clerks, to graduate, to then put on the bench. And so when you see Kavanaugh, when you see Gorsuch, when you see Amy Coney Barrett, Amy Coney Barrett, when you see all of them, this is this is 